Uh, Merry Christmas to all our uh, numerous listeners and viewers all over the world. I want to appreciate God for bringing us to yet another uh, Christmas of 2023. And by the grace of God, there's a message here that I want to come with, uh, titled, The Glory and the Blessing of Christmas the glory and the blessing of Christmas. Uh, so many people have been asking questions. What is all this Christmas all about we are talking about? Christmas, Christmas, every year Christmas. People are running helter-skelter, going from one place to the other. Uh, some people will now go to their villages. Some people are moving to town. Some people are traveling outside the country. They are going to celebrate Christmas. Now this Christmas we are talking about, what is it? I can tell you the truth, Christmas, uh, the whole history of Christmas began in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it was the fall of Adam that brings the issue of Christmas. And as at that time, because you know God is all-knowing. He knows the beginning, he knows the end from the beginning. And so he knew that Adam was going to uh, fumble along the line because he told him, thou shalt not eat this tree in the middle of the garden. And at that time, he knew that at the end, Adam would definitely uh, fail and also fall. So finally, uh, God now came on board and then he called him. The other day he said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, the woman you gave me uh, is the one that gave me the fruit to eat. And then when he now called the woman, why do you do this? And then the woman said, it's a serpent that asked me to do this. And then from there, God now said, the seed of a woman shall bruise your head. That is, the seed of a woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Uh, that is, you get that in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I think I can read it. It says, and I will put an enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. I shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. And that is the beginning. Because now the first Adam has failed. So the second Adam has to come on board to save mankind from destruction. So this whole story about uh, Christmas started from the book of Genesis, just where we read. Because man failed, so another man has to come to save mankind from destruction. And then in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, he said, And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. A virgin shall conceive. So there are so many people that have been asking questions. How can a virgin conceive that he has never slept with a woman, with a man? And then uh, somebody said, it is not possible. But I'm telling the truth, there is nothing impossible with God. God Almighty knows uh, how he does his things. And so then on that day, on the faithful day in the street of Jerusalem, where Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was on her way, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, Thou woman, you shall conceive, and you shall bear a child, and the child shall be called Emmanuel. And what is the meaning of Emmanuel? Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. Because when Adam sinned, God left man. God left man. Because even when Adam sinned, he knew that he sinned against God. So he ran. And when God came, he was calling, Adam, Adam, where are you? And then he said, I heard your voice in the garden. And that is why I hid myself. And he said, I am naked. Then God now asked him, who told you you are naked? Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to bring out here is, I am telling you the, the conception of Jesus Christ that is through Mary. And Mary was a virgin. She has never seen a man before. They have never. There was no any kind of knowledge between Mary and any other man. So it was just the blessing of the Holy Spirit. He said, for behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then, when you go down to Isaiah 
chapter 9, verse 6. He said, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Then when you go to verse 17 of that, uh, uh, sorry, verse 7 of that Isaiah chapter 9, he said, For the increase of his government, there shall be no end. To the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And to tell you the truth, I don't know why so many people are still questioning the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Because there was no anything connected to his birth. So, now it brought, it brought us to the celebration of Christmas because we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, of which his name is called Emmanuel. Now, God with us. God with us. So, God is with us. Because as at the time a man sinned, God left a man. And there was no, man was left alone. So, there was nobody to guide him again. Nobody was there again to preserve him or to protect him. So, the coming of Jesus Christ is to protect mankind. Is to protect mankind from sin. And also to deliver mankind from the fall of Adam. Hallelujah. And so I also want to tell you uh, what the Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So my question to you is, are you still doubting that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God Almighty? Do you still doubt it? For in that John chapter 3, verse 16, he makes it clear. He said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, if you need an everlasting life, come to Jesus. Believe in him. Believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Believe in, this, in the salvation of Jesus Christ. And then you have eternal life. Now, he said there is no more condemnation to them that believe it. So, if you believe in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, then I tell you the truth, you have it all. Because after this world, we have another world. That is eternity. And in eternity, the truth of the matter is that there is no end to eternity. There is no end to eternity. So, I want to talk about the glory and the blessings of Christmas. The glory and the blessing of Christmas. And I want to Look at the book of First John. First John. Uh, if you are there with your Bible, uh, just join me and open to a book of First John. First John chapter four, and I'll start reading from verse nine. First John chapter four, I'll start reading from verse nine, talking about the glory and the blessing of Christmas. So. In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So you can only live through Jesus Christ. Without him, you have no eternal life. In fact, even in this world, because without Christ, you are in crisis. So verse 10 now says, Hearing is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be the, to, to be the preparation for our sins. And then verse 11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. But this is where the problem is. Because this season is for you to show love. It's for us to love one another. And the truth of the matter is that if there is love for one another, all these crises we are seeing it in the nation today, we wouldn't see it. All this kind of, uh, uh, let me just say something here, because some people may not want to hear this, but the truth of the matter is that if you love humanity, you will not steal what belongs to your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you will not even take what you think that your neighbor will enjoy. But do you know in the world today, some people are happy when they see other people crying. They are so happy. 
they love seeing people in tears. I, I don't need to mention names, but the truth of the matter is that this message is coming to you that if you are such kind of a person that you want to see people in tears, please repent. You want to see people crying, please repent. Even if you are in government and God has given you a position to help humanity, go ahead and do it. What it is, I have never seen anybody in this world that will carry money to heaven or will carry money to the paradise, the one you believe in. Because Christmas is for all, both the Christian, non-Christians, whether you're a Christian, you're a pagan, you're a Muslim, and any religion you belong to. The celebration of Christmas belongs to all humanity. And let me also tell you that Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with God. It's a relationship with God. We talk about Christianity. So it's just for you to have that relationship. Believe in God. And once you believe in God, you have that fear of God inside of you. And then you will love humanity. You will love people. Because now, okay, we are crying in this nation, but there are people that are eating food and throwing it away. They don't even want to give it to any other person. They throw it away. And you see some people, they have more than 20 cars, they have more than 30 cars in their garage. Doing what with it? That is the question I always ask. Because like uh, one house singer, they call him Dan Mariah. He sang a song the other time. He said, even if you have 1,000 bedrooms, but you are only going to sleep in one room, and you are only going to sleep in one angle of the room, and you are only going to sleep in one side of the bed. And he said, if you have 10 cups, and then you now, because you say you are a rich person, and you put on the 10 cups on your head, they will say, look at a madman coming. Because you, of course, you will be a mad person putting on 10 cups at the same time that you are walking. So, if you have 10 of it, and then you now give your neighbor or share it among your friends and your neighbors, take one, take one, take one, and at the end, maybe you are left with two. You have blessed somebody. You have put a smile on somebody's face. But now, no. People are so greed. In fact, greed has taking over the world today. That one person, okay, he want to have more than 20 billion, 100 billion, 200 billion, and at the end, he will die and leave that money. Now, this is the time that you need to know that the truth of the matter is vanity upon vanity is all vanity. Let us show love to one another because God is admonishing us to show love to one another in that first John chapter 4, verse 11, say, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. But another thing is that there are some people that they don't even know that God exists. They don't even believe in the existence of God. But the truth is, even if you believe or you don't believe, this world we are in is temporal. One day you will definitely leave this world to another world beyond. Uh, which is the one that we call eternity. And so I want you to listen and listen good. Look at verse uh, 12 of that first uh, John chapter 4. He said, No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So my question to you now is, do you love one another? Do you love humanity? Because all the issue about Christmas, Christmas is all about love. It's all about love. God won't, God show us love by giving us his only begotten son. So we also have to love one another. And we should stop all this fighting, stop all this argument, stop all this bitterness, stop all, all of these that we are saying. Huh? Or some people will just ask you on the Wall Street, they will say, do you know me? I am this, I am that. The truth of the matter is that if this breath is just out of your nostrils, you are gone. And you are nobody. You are nobody. They will just take you. In fact, the whole thing that the world will give you or will dash you is all six feet. Six feet and, you know, the, the, the grave cloth has never been costly at all. It's only 600 naira that they will wrap you inside and take you inside the, 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 the sand. Where my God and all of that will eat you up. So, why can't you show love to your neighbor? 
Why can't you show love to your neighbor? That food that you store in your storehouse, that you don't want to share it with people, one day you will die and leave it. That clothes that you store it in your, in your box, that, you, you know, some people, like I have an uncle that he, he was a commissioner of, uh, for works and housing, uh, then in Plateau State, uh, who uh, in, he was a commissioner during Shagari regime. That was in 1983, uh, 1979 through 1983. But you know, even in in nineties, he the clothes he put uh, he wear he wore when he was a commissioner. As he saw those clothes in his box, then I was asking him, Uncle, what are you doing with these clothes inside your box? The clothes over 10 years, 20 years inside your box, doing what with it. Please, let us not be stingy at this time around. I'm just calling you, and I'm also advising you, don't be stingy. Let us show love to one another. If you have two clothes, give one to your neighbor. If you have two shoes, two pairs of shoes, give one to your neighbor. And then by doing that, you are showing the love of Christ. And then verse 13 say, Here by know we that we dwell in him. And that is, if you show love to your neighbor, then hereby you know that we dwell in him, and he is in us. So he that does not show love to his neighbor, he has no God in him, and God does not dwell in him. He said, because he had given us of his spirit. Then verse 14 now says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son, to be the savior of the world. Do you hear that? Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. So the glory of Christmas is for Jesus to save the world from the power of sin, from the power of Satan, from being condemned, and to save mankind from destruction. And so that is one of the glory of Christmas. And then I also mentioned that, that you, should show love to your neighbor. And then verse 15 said, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is God. So my question now is, have you confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And if you have confessed, are you doing what God said you should do? You are still going to church, but you are lying. You are still going to church, but you are stealing. You are still going to church. You are still doing evil things. People cannot trust you because you have not really shown that integrity of being a Christian. And so if you have not shown that integrity of being a Christian, then what are you? In fact, maybe a pagan is even better than you because you are not showing that love. You are not doing what you're supposed to do as a Christian. Now, time has come for us to show love to one another again. Now tell your neighbor by your side, please love your neighbor as yourself. Tell another person, love your neighbor as yourself. And I am calling the whole world today. I am crying with tears in my heart. I am crying for peace in the world. Especially when you come to Africa. There is no peace in most of our nations in Africa. In the continent of Africa, there is no peace. No peace in Sudan. No peace in Somalia. In Somalia, no peace in... There is no peace all over. So many chaos everywhere. No peace. Even in Nigeria, there is no peace. So please, we are calling for peace. In that Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he said, Jesus Christ, he said, Unto us a son is born, and a, a, a child is born, and a son is given. And unto us... He said, a government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, we are calling, he said, he is the prince of peace. Now, Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. And you are calling his name every day. Every day you are calling his name. But you are the one again, fermenting trouble. You are the one again, bringing problems here and there. Then what are you saying? Are you a hypocrite? Because you, are, you say you are uh, worshipping the prince of peace. But you don't allow peace to exist. And you see, all over the world today, there is no peace. But it is my prayer that let there be peace. In all over the continent of the world, 
let there be peace. We should thank God in this country that there is no um, natural disaster, what you call natural disaster. Yes, there is no natural disaster in this nation. Okay, there is this uh, uh, country they call uh, Iceland. The other day I was just watching on television and I saw the volcanoes, the way uh, liquid fire was just bubbling off. I said, wow. So this is a natural disaster. And we don't have it in Nigeria. The other day also in China, there was an earthquake. But here, we don't have anything like that. We should appreciate God, that God has really loved this nation. God loved Africa as a continent, particularly God loved Nigeria as a nation. So let us love one another. In this season of Christmas, we should love one another. And show love to your neighbor, show love to your family, show love to your brethren, even in the church. Because today, most of the times in the church of Jesus Christ, it's even where you see criminals are hiding. See all four one nights. See all manners of nonsense things that they are doing. Because the truth is, if really you say you have God, then why are you doing the evil things? You say you are a child of God, and then the things you are doing is that of Satan. Then you are not a child of God. Who then are you deceiving? Please, let us serve God in truth and in spirit. Because the Bible is speaking in John chapter 4, verse 24. It says, God is seeking for those that we worship him in truth and in the spirit. My question to you is, are you worshiping God in truth and in the spirit? Or you are just taking it as a religion? Where well, I tell you the truth, Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life. And it is a relationship. It is your relationship with humanity. Like what is being written in Matthew chapter 25. He said, I was hungry and you refused to give me food. I was sick and you couldn't take care of me. I was without clothes and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was without shoes. You didn't give me shoes. And then people will be asking on that day of judgment, where do we see you? And then he will not answer them. The same way you treat your neighbor, the same way you treat your brother, your sister, your uncle, your auntie, you are doing it to me. Do you want that question to be repeated on your head? If not, let us bow down our head and then uh, pray. But first and foremost, I, uh, I want to give you a chance to repent of your sin. Because the truth of the matter is that whether you agree or not, this world one day will pass away. You see me sitting down here. I was a very handsome man. Very, very handsome man. But I'm aging. <laughs> I'm aging. So whether you like it or not, one day you will not be here. You must age. Because this flesh must go. Yes, very true. You now say, oh, you are beautiful. Ah, one day. Ah. Your beauty will go. It will go. You won't see it anymore. Okay? The money you think you are running here and there looking for the money. I want to have a house in Maitama. I want to have a house in Asokoro. I want to have a house in Wise. I want to... One day you just leave it with my friend. <laughs> you leave it and go. They will take you to the graveyard with you. So you just leave it and go. So it is better for you to settle with God now. And if you have done that, you are watching this uh, broadcast today. Please just uh, stretch forth your hands towards the television and then I pray with you. And you are going to say this after me. You are going to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I know that without you, I'm an ordinary empty capable. I know that if I go the way I am going, I will go to hellfire. But I've made up my mind via this message. I have given my life, I have decided to give my life to Jesus Christ. Father, accept me today. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I've accepted you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Satan, I've denied you today. I'm no longer your property. I made up my mind to follow Jesus and Jesus alone. I will serve you. Father, accept me as your I have accepted Jesus Christ today as my personal Lord and Savior. And so, Father, accept me as your son. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. And if you have done that, let me also pray with you. Father, I want to thank you for these faithful ones that have repented of their sin. Lord Jesus Christ, wash their sin clean with your precious blood. Accept them today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Uh, let me also pray for our nation, Nigeria. Father, I want to thank you for this nation. We thank you for how far you brought us from January to December. Lord, we say thank you. Despite all the ups and downs in this nation, but you preserve us, you kept us alive. You count us among the living. Father, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, Father, we are asking, let there be peace in 36 states of the Federation and also in Abuja. Let there be peace in 774 local governments of Nigeria. Let there be peace. Let this um, issue of armed bandit, let it cease from today. Mm -hmm. This issue of kidnapping, let it cease from today. In the name of Jesus, give our leaders a godly heart. Give our leaders the fear of God that let them know that at the end, they will give an account of whatever they are doing today. And so, Father, I ask by the Spirit of the Lord, grant the wisdom of how to lead us aright in this nation, in the name of Jesus, even the members of House of Assembly, the member of National Assembly, Father, we are asking, O oh Lord. Even the laws that they are uh, bringing out for the nation, we are asking, let them do it with the fear of God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. And also those that we are uh, in the vineyard of the Lord, so many of us today, we are doing this work uh, not in the way that the Lord said we should do it, but Father, we are calling by the Spirit of the Lord, let your mercy forgive us of all our mistakes. And Father, we are asking, everyone that is calling on your name, Father, put your fear in him. And let there be fear of the Lord in him. For the Bible said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And so, Father, we thank you for putting your fear in all humanity. That we may serve you and we will follow you to the end. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. It. And amen. I so let you say amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>